What are you eating? Taco meets nacho. I call it the naco. I call it gross beyond reason. Do you want some? <laughs> naco. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the much-requested Nako from Kim Possible, a recipe that starts with some robust corn chips. Make sure you get some good, thick ones, because they're going to need to stand up against a litany of toppings, the first of which is going to be guacamole. We're starting by splitting and twisting open two ripe Haas avocados, that is, avocados soft to the touch but not mushy, twisting out the pit, and scoring with a butter knife. This is just to make it a little bit easier to mash later on. After we've scooped out their innards with a spoon into a medium-sized bowl, we are finely chopping one half of one red onion. You could use a regular onion or a shallot if you like, but this adds some nice color. We're also crushing in two cloves of garlic, something I forgot to do the last time I made guacamole on this show, and I caught hell for it, so I'm not forgetting this time. We're also squeezing in half of a lime. If you want to be really cool, you can toast up and grind some fresh cumin, but I'm just going to shake some in from a plain old bottle. And I'm going to finally chop up half of a jalapeno. If you make fun of me for wearing a glove while chopping a mildly spicy pepper, go ahead and try making fun of me again after you've gone to the bathroom. We're now using a common household fork to mash everything together to your desired consistency. I like a creamy guac with some chunky remnants of its avocado origins. We're also seasoning with salt and pepper to taste, giving everything a nice mix to make sure it's all well incorporated, and of course we need to conduct a rudimentary taste test. Once we've got the flavors where we like them, you can make this guac ahead of time 24 hours in advance so long as you press plastic wrap directly down onto the surface of the guac so it does not discolor. Refrigerate and then it's time to make an ultra simple salsa. A quarter of a red onion, half a jalapeno, a crushed clove of garlic, and a handful of cilantro into the bowl of a food processor and pulse until roughly chopped. Then we're going to stem, cut in half, and core four small tomatoes. Reserve the juice and seeds if you want to use them for some weird reason. Otherwise, add them to the food processor and process for about 15 seconds until you get a nice semi-smooth chunky salsa that we're going to likewise season with salt, pepper, and the juice of half a lime before covering and placing in the fridge until ready to use. These can both be made ahead of time, but next up we're making queso, which must be made fresh. Start by making a roux from one tablespoon each butter and all-purpose flour that we're going to whisk together over medium heat until the smell of raw flour dissipates. Then we're going to slowly stream in one cup of whole milk, whisking constantly so as to prevent any lumps from forming and making a nice smooth bechamel into which we're going to add about four cups of shredded white cheddar, or yellow cheddar if you want to be a little bit more TV show accurate. But me, I like a white cheddar cheddar queso it makes the next ingredients pop, which are about half a can of spicy green chilies and tomatoes, drained of their liquid and added to our melty cheese mixture until thick and, well, delicious. Now finally it's time to start assembling our nachos. I like to do this in a rim baking sheet. This allows for maximum topping exposure with minimum sogginess. We're going to start by laying down an initial layer of chips and shredded white cheddar, followed by a generous drizzle of our freshly made queso. Maybe about half of what you got in the pot until no naked tortilla chips remain. And then we're gonna top that with another layer of chips, another layer of cheese, and another layer of queso. Because since when were nachos ever about moderation? We're then going to garnish with some thinly sliced jalapenos and place the whole affair into a preheated 425 degree Fahrenheit oven until browned, bubbly, golden, crisp, and all the good things in the world. Then for the sake of individual topping customization, I like to place dollops of guacamole in corners A and C, salsa in corners B and D, and dollops of sour cream on edges 1A and 2B. I know this is confusing, please consult your graphing calculator for reference. And as much as I'd love to just dig into this cheesy affair as nachos ought to be, this is the nacho that we're talking about, so I'm going to set aside a portion that I'm going to cut into smaller, sort of more manageable pieces, place into a toasted flour tortilla, and top with each of our prepared accoutrements. It was at this moment that I was realizing that I should have put some beef on these nachos so I wasn't just eating a chip taco. But that little nip pick aside, it wasn't bad. I mean, you know, it was chips on chips on chips, but the flavors were all there, the chips were still crispy, the cheese was melty and gooey, and it was so good that I actually had a few bites before, you know, the shame set in. Mm -hmm. 